Not content with your content? You've come to the right place. The Discontent Show with Joe Kuzma. Every brand starts with a story. Here's how you can grow your business by sharing it. Now, with today's topic, the host of The Discontent Show, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Discontent Show. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I am here as your guru of all things with content marketing. Today, I'm going to be circling back to something I spoke about maybe about a month, month and a half ago. I was talking about how to get started on Instagram, and a lot of those tips and tricks apply to what I'm going to say today, but I just discovered something recently within the last week that I thought I would share with all of my listeners out there, and it makes for, it's actually pretty exciting to be completely honest, because one of the biggest pains in the butt is how, even though it's owned by Facebook, now I know initially it wasn't, but Instagram has been pretty pretty much a pl- platform that's been locked into using a smartphone app into using your mobile phone. And now there's some ways for some of us, maybe PC and or Mac users, anyone who has like a, you know, a regular computer out there in the world, other than like a tablet or a phone or something that doesn't use like a mouse and a keyboard, you can now get some of your images out onto Instagram and a lot easier. I was pretty excited to figure this out and I'm going to share this with you too, but one major caveat to get started is... This doesn't work if you have a personal Instagram profile. That means you have to have a business profile. And also, you must link this to a Facebook business page or, you know, they just call it a page. It used to be a fan page back in the day. It's the thing that people like instead of friending you. Uh, You shouldn't have like a regular personal Facebook for your business anyways. You should have a business profile. Likewise, this is the same thing you should have for Instagram if you're doing this properly and you want people to be able to see you and also, you know, reap the rewards from different types of analytics, being able to run ads and do that sort of thing either on either platform. So they are kind of tied together, of course, since Facebook owns Instagram, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, they purchased it several years ago. And for the most part back, you know, the old school way of doing a lot of this stuff was you had to, I don't know, uh, either take a photo with your phone and do most of it through an app. And that's kind of a pain in the butt for those of us who create special graphics, flyers or anything of that nature, or maybe somebody else takes a photo and sends it to us. And then what do you do with it? Well, you had to maybe upload it through a service like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or text it to yourself, save it to your phone or device or tablet or whatever, and then upload it again through Instagram. And that can become a real hassle. Now, um, when you're dealing with any type of materials such as photos or images with Instagram, I also want to point this out. It's probably best that you work with squares. You can work with rectangles as long as they're a certain ratio, but there's still certain quirks within the Instagram platform. And uh, I'm going to mention a few of the services that allow you to post directly to it. And it the reason I didn't mention these, you know, initially is, and I may have just brought it up uh, just a bit. Some of it's like a real hassle, but now one of them has made it real easy. And I'm also going to kind of share the hack again, if I didn't before, on how to use a web browser directly in order to post manually to Instagram. But then again, the whole point of my, my platform here with Discontent is to try and make this as easy as possible on you. And I didn't want to go through hacks and doing things manually because one of the ways to save time in doing all this content marketing is scheduling things in advance, having all of your ducks in a row and not having to log log in and out of a Facebook page and a Twitter and this and that, because let's face it, you probably, most of you, if you're entrepreneurs, probably have maybe your personal and your business stuff set up individually and you don't want to log in and out of each of them. Now, Instagram over the years has made it a little easier recently. I don't know, maybe in the last year, year and a half, it used to be you had to log in and out. Now you could have multiple logins up to about five on one Instagram app. And that could be a problem too. If you happen to be someone like me that has like, you know, 20 different clients and you're posting to their profiles, 
you, you have to log in and out of that. So there, I'm, I'm going to show you some easier ways to do that as well, or at least tell you because you won't be able to see here on the podcast. But um, just keep in mind that when you're dealing with images, the easiest way to do this is is square. And if it's just a regular uh, photo, a lot of times you could crop it and stuff within Instagram. But if you're using some type of platform outside of Instagram, such as Hootsuite or Buffer, which are the two main ones that I recommend, and they each have their own benefits and their own downfalls when it comes to using Instagram, um, you're, you're going to want to stay with Square. You're going to want to crop anything in like a Photoshop type editor ahead of time before you even get to the posting part or you're going to you're going to run into some problems or it's just not going to work or it's going to fail. OK, um, so that's one of the big things is is just you want something that's about a 1200 pixel square at the minimum. If you have something higher that's better, a higher resolution image is going to perform better on Instagram. So keep that in mind. And if you're doing it as a square and you share it over to Facebook as well, I, I like to keep things kind of universal, so to speak. And Facebook doesn't have a problem with square images. Of course, Twitter, depending on where and how you view on Twitter, is going to make a thumbnail or it's going to crop it. And of course, people have to tap on it or click on it and then it enlarges. And that's up to you how much you want to worry about that. If you don't have a lot of text, on an image, like if it isn't like a poster or flyer or brochure, then that's probably less important that it gets a little cropped. I think people will know. Uh, otherwise, some people don't, and it may look like a mistake and they don't get to see all of your information. So keep those kind of things in mind if you happen to be dabbling in graphic design or you are a graphic designer that's working with social media platforms. And, uh, you know, it's just Instagram's just kind of its own beast. I've mentioned my love hate with it because you can't link to anything else. But there's no denying that it's a platform that has, at least right now, less noise. You don't have to deal with a lot of the politics and droning and stuff and, and just the filth and the keyboard warriors that are on Facebook or Twitter. Unfortunately, that's where your audience, that's where your clients, that's where your customers are. And you have to be there even as annoying as it can be. Uh, Instagram. Now, there's no downfall, you know, there's no, I don't want to say downfall, um, make no mistake about it, those type of things happen on Instagram too, but it's just less likely because, you know, it's a lot harder to share, I don't know, satire or fake news or just, you know, anything like that, uh, because people don't know these same tips and tricks that I'm about to share with you. As it becomes more prevalent, and I believe if Instagram ever were to allow you to post links, which would make it a little bit better for someone like myself, because then somebody, it, you can lead them directly to what you want them to instead of having to type it out or find it, you know, like a link in your bio or something like that, go to your homepage and then have to search for it themselves. It's a lot easier to just, you know, spoon feed someone, so to speak, and get and give them exactly what they need, what they want right then and there. Instagram, unfortunately, can't do that, but you can at least get the graphic or the photo or image type benefits of that platform and being on it, you're going to reach a, you're going to reach a wide audience. A lot of people tend to think it's a younger audience. And while some of that is true, some of it isn't either because I mean, there's an awful lot of grandparents and stuff that like to share photos and people get on those type of platforms. Same thing with like a Pinterest, but just sticking to the Instagram thing today. You, so they kind of get your ducks in a row here as far as what you're thinking image wise. But now how do I get that image onto my Instagram profile? Well, like I said, back in the day, if you were creating this image, let's say you're creating a flyer, for example, you're creating a little square kind of like a, a call out or an ad. You made it to the spec of Instagram. You use some program like I've recommended on my website. Let's say Canva, for example, C-A-N-V-A. Uh, and then I'm not necessarily saying that it's the greatest thing, but if you want to do something quick and dirty and you don't want to have to worry about, you know, whether there's royalty images or anything like that. They have a lot of royalty free stock images that are incorporated in that. You could also upload your own images. They have like pro versions and you can use fancier fonts, but just the basics and getting colors and making something very simple, it'll put it within that type of spec. And it has an app too. I mean, you could do this stuff on the phone. It becomes incredibly more time consuming and difficult in my opinion, if you're, you know, tapping a around with your thumb or your index finger as opposed to using a mouse and computer. So if you end up making one of these graphics and you save it off of this platform, it's like, now what do I do with it? How do I get it on Instagram? Well, you don't have to do all of these convoluted things like emailing it to yourself and then saving it to your phone or anything like that anymore. In fact, 
You don't really have to use your phone at all. The number one hacky way to do this, believe it or not, is if you happen to be a user on Google Chrome, and I believe this is going to work if you have like Microsoft Edge or Firefox too, but I happen to be a Chrome user as does over 70% of the world that's out there. It's the number one web browser and, you know, for better or worse. And if you go to Instagram's page, just go to Instagram.com, just using the web browser. And what we're going to do here is just click anywhere in the page. Um, preferably, you want to click somewhere that's off of an image, but it'll still work somewhere else. Or you could use the shortcut Control U. Uh, or I'm sorry, not Control U. We don't want to view paid source, but at the very bottom, we want to inspect Control Shift I. I'm sorry, that is inspect. And what inspect does is it's like, oh my goodness, what is this? This is going to freak a lot of people out. And like I said, I, li I like to keep things simple because I know there are some people who aren't as computer savvy out there. But this is basically development tools for someone like myself that likes to code, and we could screw around and do some things in here. You only have to worry about one little button on here, and you turn it on and off depending on if you want to be able to view any website, particularly here Instagram's website, as you would if you were viewing it on a uh, mobile device, such as an iPhone. I have mine set to an iPhone 10 viewing right now. As soon as you click this little button, if you happen to see the pop-up window, this is the console. It may even be at the bottom of your screen, and you may have to pop it out, to be completely honest, in order to get what I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you. Um, in order to do that, if you see the window, there's three little dots just underneath the normal max, min, and uh, the close, out, and exit button there, the, the X, as most people call it. There's three vertical dots. And as soon as you click that, you get this little pop-up menu, and it says Dock Side. And as you hover over it, you could undock into a separate window, and that's kind of what you want to do because the others dock to the left, the bottom, and the right. Left and right will probably work. Bottom may obstruct the thing I'm going to try and tell you here. So if you're following along and you've changed the dock and you now you have it hovering over the window, you could actually click like on the, on the title bar, which is the darker shade of gray, and click, hold, and drag, and move it out of the way so you could actually see the Instagram window. And your button to the far left, there's two buttons on that second on that first menu bar row. So if you're looking at it and you have the Chrome icon, it says Dev Tools. It probably says Instagram or something there. Right below it, there's something with an arrow pointing into a square. You want the one right to the right. And if you can see it, it kind of looks almost like uh, like a smartphone and a tablet. And it says Toggle Device Toolbar. You could actually do this by doing Control Shift M as well. And when you do it. Whoa, lo and behold, everything on your screen gets smaller, right? So I'm actually viewing this as an iPhone 10, and if you look on the screen, if you look on the Instagram website now, you could change. It has Galaxy S5, Pixel 2, and some others that are on here. But, I mean, it's safe to probably do, like, either Galaxy or iPhone 10 as a more common screen size. It really doesn't matter because what I'm really trying to get you to do now is, is see the mobile uh, this is the mobile website for Instagram. This has tricked Instagram into believing you are doing this from a phone. Uh, and this is not available normally to the web, and they haven't closed this loophole just yet. So what you can do is, is just simply reload the page. You click on the refresh button, F5 if you're on a PC. And as soon as you do this, you're going to see some things just uh, popped up on the screen. And you got icons, of course, at the top. You got a, a, a camera icon, which will pretty much kind of do the same thing as I want to do here. But at the bottom, you have a, a home button, a search button, and also that one in the middle that, that is like kind of like a rounded square with a plus in the middle. If you click that, it's going to do the same thing as the camera. And this is going to enable you to go through, search on your computer, find that square image that you created for Instagram, and manually post it. And it's going to go through some of the same options. Not every single option that you have in the app. You could always go back and you know tag people and add certain things. But you could at least type in on a keyboard what you want to say and your hashtags and then share it. Now, it is a little quirky because you're, this is meant to be a development tool for 
like web developers such as myself to test websites for responsiveness to see if they work like on an iPhone or a Galaxy or an iPad or any other device. It's called responsiveness or a responsive website. But this also allows you to get around when a website like Instagram is searching for a particular screen widths or user agents to see if you're using like an iPhone, for example. And then it unlocks some of these uh, additional features such as being able to manually post just like this. So if you like to manually post and you have something that's trapped on your computer, lo and behold, here's a hack. Here's a way to get around that. Now, things can get a little bit easier, but it all depends on using third-party apps, okay? Um, one of those third-party apps that I like is Hootsuite. I also like Buffer too, but Buffer is going to be a major pain in your backs and whatever side. Um, Buffer is going to require you to set up something called Instagram Reminders, and that means that you have to set up the Buffer app in addition to all of this other Instagram stuff uh, on the side, okay? And in order for this stuff to work, you have to have an Instagram business profile. So let me backtrack just one second in order for you to do this. You're going to have to go on your phone and log in to your business account on Instagram. Whether you have other accounts already on or you go and add an account, however you want to do that, you could do a Google search for it if you just have to log out and do this. This is a one-time setup thing, so if you don't want this permanently on like a personal device, you just have to do it once. And once you're signed into that business profile, if you're viewing basically, if you're on your home button, your you know your home page here, you're not going to see this. You got to go over and you're going to tap on your icon and view your user profile. So that means that your image and your name and anything that you've posted is there because at the very top it's going to have your username. And then it's going to have something that looks like, you know, the three, uh, three lines. We call it like a hamburger button. And this may look different. I'm using this on an iPhone uh, 10R just, so, just for reference. But this is going to maybe look different if you're on an Android device. But it should be very, a very similar walkthrough. When you do that, there's a little slide over menu when you tap on the hamburger button. And you're going to see all kinds of stuff like I have different options now because this is a business account. But what you want to basically go down to is all the way at the bottom it says settings. And when you get to settings, it's going to say something like account. And when you go to the account, the very last option, all the way at the bottom, it's going to be in a light blue color, like a regular hyperlink on the web. And it's going to be convert to a business account. You're going to go through that process. It's going to check your Facebook and see if you're logged in as an admin to a Facebook page and going to connect those things together. And as soon as you go through that conversion process, and of course, if you need more of a walkthrough on this, I don't want to waste anyone's time because it's very hard to explain it versus maybe see it. Just look it up on YouTube or look for any uh, FAQs maybe on Instagram's website. But once you convert this over to a business profile, you can now come back to something like Buffer or Hootsuite. Now, where Buffer comes in and is very annoying is, as I just mentioned, you have to have the Buffer app installed because they still do the old school way of doing this, which they were able to... Uh, apply these or post these things directly to Buffer, but there was a fallback in case it didn't. Like, let's say you had one of these aspect ratios that didn't really work, an image that doesn't fit. Um, it will remind you, you could schedule something in advance. Let's say you schedule it for 6 o'clock at night, and you went through, and then all of a sudden it didn't work. What it would do is send you a notification on your phone via the Buffer app, not through Instagram, and it would save um, some of the text onto your clipboard on your on your smart device, and it would also copy the photo and open up Instagram for you. So all you had to do was paste whatever you typed in there and then go through the process and manually do it. We're trying to get around that because we don't want to do that at all, right? Do you really want to be bugged? If you're really trying to do something around and it posts around dinner time and it doesn't go through, do you really want to be bugged with an alert? I really don't either. But um, Buffer's halfway there because after you set up all of that, it also has the direct publishing kind of uh, direct scheduling for Instagram. And when you do that type of thing, um, that's basically what I like Hootsuite better for because they don't have the annoying nag alert thing now. And that's what surprised me this uh, this week was setting this up with a new client. Now I'm able to go on and do the direct publishing with Hootsuite and not have to go through all this mess of, well, if this doesn't work, now Hootsuite oh, technically buffer because I'm kind of you know talking about the way buffer did it. I'm not going to get an alert from Hootsuite that's going to say, hey, 
you need to open this up in the middle of, you know, eating your dinner or, you know, cutting up your stuff for your small kid so they could chew their food. So you want to probably sign up for, remember, a lot of these things you could pay for and a lot of them you have a free tier. If you use Hootsuite or Buffer, you get three profiles, depending on what those profiles are for, under their free plan. Uh, the rest of it isn't so much limited, and I doubt that many of you are posting more, more than once per day, if not once per week or a couple times a week where this is going to affect you. But this is going to enable you now to use that same image and post to, you'll probably set up Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You'll probably have all three of those. Those are the big three at the same time, schedule it or do it all at once, and now you don't have to worry. And I thought this was really cool to share with you, and I know it's at the tail end, and it's like, ta-da, the big reveal. It took like all of a minute to say, hey, Hootsuite does this automatically now. But you had to understand just how much of a pain in the neck it is not only to do maybe manually, especially, I mean, I do the stuff manually through this, you know, inspect view on Chrome. But you have to do it, you know, almost at a certain time or instantly or just ignore the rest of your social media schedule to do it. And if you're making an announcement for something, that's a real hassle. You know, at 10 a.m., tickets go on sale for this and, you know, or tickets are on sale for this now and you have to post it at 10 a.m., that's a pain in the butt. Now you could do it with Hootsuite. And if Buffer comes around to, and I imagine they're going to, these are changes. The reason they're able to do this, these are changes with business Instagram uh, accounts. And, you know, Facebook is driven to getting some of their money back from their investment in Instagram. So they're going to continue making some tweaks for this, particularly on the business end, because the business people are the ones who are paying for the ads and really driving any type of profit or revenue for this platform and for Facebook. So I hope you found this to be an interesting program because, you know what, this excited me. It really says something about my life this day and age when something like this on a, a piece of software like this, uh, you know, an app in the cloud or whatever you want to call Hootsuite, uh, it has something that makes life so much, so much easier. And I can't wait to go back and set some of these things up with some of my other clients now that I've had for quite some time because everything else has been a, a, a hacky type of thing. You could always use if this, then that, if I had a big episode on that maybe about two months ago with a lot of automation, but then you get all kinds of wacky text and maybe the photo doesn't show up right and everything like that. With automation, I mean, you get what you're asking for. So if you post something to Facebook or Twitter and want it automatically posted to Instagram or vice versa or something like that, kind of a pain in the butt. So just kind of keep that in mind. Hootsuite's where you want to look for it. If not, maybe manually. If you want to go through the whole buffer thing, if you have no other need for buffer and you don't mind alerts or when something goes wrong, then go ahead and set that up on your smartphone. You can go through that process too. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. Because I know if you followed the IFT program, buffer is tightly wound into the IFT platform, whereas Hootsuite is not. So you may find some different benefits by just going through the long process of getting buffer to work in a much simpler way. And, and it really does too, but it's not as easy. It's nowhere near as easy as Hootsuite now is as literally easy as posting to Facebook and Twitter if you've ever used it for those in the past. Until next time, my name is Joe Kuzma and I encourage all listeners, well, if first of all, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, be safe, be good, and I'll catch you later. Hi folks, this is Joe Kuzma. <laughs> no, don't worry, you're not hearing things twice. I'm just here to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to today's show and being a follower and subscriber of the Discontent Podcast. And I want to remind you that if you're interested in more information about all the various things it is that I do, whether it be about this show, content marketing, or you want to ask a question, you may visit me at joekuzma.com. That's J-O-E-K-U-Z-M-A dot com. Or you can follow me as well on Facebook. Make sure you get the page and not the personal profile. Sorry, it's only for friends and family. Also on Twitter at Joe underscore Kuzma, LinkedIn or Instagram. Also, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe, whether that be on iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider so you don't miss out on any of the great episodes that we have. Once again, thank you again for your support. And I look forward, as always, to speaking and interacting with each of you again soon.